Chapter 4.10.2 Two ways for the oppressed to countervail both abstract and physical power projectors. Using this newly updated control structure design, we can see that it reveals two ways for members to escape oppression if they feel like they are in an abusive or exploitative resource control structure. If a member is being oppressed by either abstract or physical power projectors, regardless of whether those power projectors are from a neighboring country or from the member's own country, those members have two ways to countervail their control authority. The first way was originally mentioned in section 3.11. Members can simply refuse not to assign value to the resources being controlled. As an example, consider the US dollar world reserve currency. The US dollar is an international resource controlled by an abstract power hierarchy backed by the world's most powerful power projectors, the US military. The US military legitimizes the abstract power of its presidential republic and by virtue of the design logic encoded into their rules of law, that presidential republic has executive control authority over the US dollar. While it is certainly true that both types of power projectors, the abstract power of the presidential republic plus the physical power of the U.S. military, have control authority over the state of ownership and chain of custody of U.S. dollars, that does not make anyone have to value United States dollars. Here, therein lies the key to countervailing U.S. power. Hypothetically speaking, if the U.S. were to forget how this power structure works and became systemically exploitative and abusive with their control authority over U.S. dollars, for example, if they started denying people access to U.S. dollars through sanctions or debasing people's purchasing power by inflating U.S. dollars, for example, if they started denying people's access to U.S. dollars through sanctions or debasing people's purchasing power through inflating U.S. dollars. If then members could countervail both the physical and abstract power of the U.S. by simply not valuing U.S. dollars as their world reserve currency anymore. For this reason, the assigned value to resources control action, which members can exercise, seems small, but it is in fact very empowering. If the people in charge of the US dollar were to do something which motivated members to exercise this control action and stop valuing US dollars, their abstract power and control authority would disappear. It is, therefore, critical for the U.S. to not do anything to motivate members from exercising this control action, else they risk losing their power. The United States deliberately made themselves vulnerable to this attack vector by converting U.S. dollars from a physical system into an abstract belief system in the 1970s. Like so many organizations to come before them, the United States seems to have lost sight of the value of physical constraints to abstract power. By converting U.S. dollar from a money denominated by gold into a money denominated purely by bits of information, a.k.a. fiat, the U.S. converted their entire monetary system into an abstract belief system with no physical constraints securing it against systemic exploitation by high-ranking people who control the transfer and storage of those bits of information. Additionally, the people with abstract power and control authority over the U.S. dollar only have it insofar as people are willing to believe in it because physical power is irrelevant at securing money which doesn't physically exist. So not only do members have the freedom to choose not to assign value to US dollar, 
they also have the freedom to choose not to recognize the abstract power and control authority of the people who control U.S. dollar. This means the entire United States dollar monetary resource control system is backed by nothing but the faith in the value of the dollar and the abstract power of the people who control the dollar. Of course, people can lose people can quickly lose their faith at any time. So it's imperative for the United States not to do anything to motivate people to lose their faith in the US dollar. Which means it's imperative for the US to not deny people's access to US dollar or to degrade its purchasing power. Yet in fiat form, there's nothing to physically constrain the U.S. from doing either of these things. These power dynamics put the people who have control over U.S. dollar on thin ice and make it especially important for them to have the discipline not to deny people access to U.S. dollar or degrade its purchasing power. Yet in fiat form, there's nothing to physically constrain the United States from doing either of these things. These power dynamics put the people who have control over U.S. dollar on thin ice and make it especially important for them to have the discipline not to deny people's access to U.S. dollars or degrade its purchasing power. These people must be careful not to do anything to cause people to lose faith in their imaginary power because if they do, their abstract power and control authority over this valuable abstract resource could quickly evaporate no matter how physically powerful the United States is. This same principle applies to virtually any form of non-essential resource. For example, many people use both physical and abstract power to control the state of ownership and chain of custody of diamonds. Both physical and abstract power over diamonds can be made obsolete by simply not valuing diamonds. There are, of course, some essential resources which sapiens don't have the option of not valuing. Food, water, oxygen. In cases where sapiens don't have the option of escaping oppression by choosing not to value resources, their second option to regain control authority over the state of ownership and chain of custody of their resources is to become their own physical power projectors and impose severe physical prohibitive costs on their oppressors. This is a primary motivation behind wars because physical power is inegalitarian and inclusive. Anyone can choose to become a physical power projector regardless of their rank or title or standing within an existing abstract power hierarchy.